Praise God. <clears throat> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Welcome everyone to the City of David weekly Bible study. I pray that God has richly and truly blessed you on this day. Go ahead and get comfortable. I believe that God has a word for us on tonight. We are still studying the book of Job and tonight let's find our way to Job 8. Job 8. I believe God has a rich word for us. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so tonight in Job 8, I, I just came tonight to speak to someone who is waiting on God to do something. You're waiting on God to do something. And we're talking about loose ends, ladder ends. Say that with me, loose ends, ladder ends. But tonight, I have a word for somebody that's waiting on God to do something. You're waiting on God to make a way. You're waiting on God to bring something out, bring you out, bring the situation out. I don't want you to give up loose ends, ladder ends. Although it may have started one way, trust God. I'm going to say it again. Although it may be one way, trust God. Amen? Trust God. And so the focus verse on tonight is Job 8 and verse 7. Job 8 verse 7. That's my verse on tonight. That's the verse I want to go in on. Job 8 verse 7. And so we're talking about small beginnings but great increase. Small beginning, but a great increase. Come on, type it on the screen. Small beginnings, but great increase. Amen? Amen, amen. I'm excited. I think God has a word for us. Let's pray. God, we say thank you. We give you glory on tonight. God, we magnify you. We declare there is none like you. 10,000 tongues. God, we couldn't praise you loud enough and long enough, God, in comparison to how good you have been toward us. And so we ask right now, God, that you would move, move throughout our whole entire being, God, and then lead to our neighbor, lead to our neighbor, God. In fact, consume our worship space right now, God, that your presence might be there. Some of us need to hear a word from you, God. Life has been like that. Some of us need to hear a word from you. And so speak, God. Speak like only you can. And we will give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. It's not what it looks like. Amen. It's not what it looks like. Amen. Amen. And so on tonight... We closed in chapter 7 on last week, and, and Job is responding to his friend. He's responding to his friend, Eliphaz, who gave him a rebuke. Eliphaz gave him a rebuke, did not necessarily talk like I would hope my friends talk to me when I'm going through a hard time in my life. And Job, in chapter 6 and 7, he gives him a rebuke. Let's talk about that for a minute. If you consider yourself my friend and you want to do things according to scripture, everything must be done, what? In decency and in order. Amen. And that said, uh, just because you have something to say does not mean you should always say it. Amen. And when you are in the presence of someone who has more knowledge about the subject matter, you should just be quiet. Amen. When God gives you information or revelation about a situation and you are in the midst of speaking, you should just be quiet. Amen. And that's not pastor being mean. That's pastor trying to teach you your Bible. Because turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And when you get around verse 30, the Bible says, And if a revelation comes 
to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. If a revelation, if knowledge, if information comes to someone who is not speaking, the first speaker should stop. Amen. You could be the first speaker, but if new information come, you should just be quiet. Amen. And so when you get to chapter 8, a Job now is beginning to uh, be addressed by his second friend. Amen. And this friend is named Bildad. He's a Shuhite. And a Shuhite is said to come from Abram. When you read Abram chapter 7, Abram had children. And one of the child of Abram name was Shua. And Shua, it is said, is the father of the Shuite people. Amen. And so Bildad comes from that lineage, and he's trying to address Job. Now, you should know that he is, according to Bible scholars, much younger than Eliphaz. And so whereas Eliphaz was talking slick to Job, it's said that Bildad may be a little harsher in his language, because Eliphaz has wisdom. Wisdom is what? The proper use of knowledge. Amen? And so let's see what Bildad has to say to our good friend Job, but I want you to focus on verse 7. Verse 7 is going to be your verse to write on the sticky on tonight, because I believe it's going to bless your life. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in our text, how long will you say such things? Your words are a blistering wind. In other words, he's calling Job a he's calling Job a windbag. And he's declaring that Job is out of line based off of Job's words in chapter six and seven to Eliphaz. And so he heard Job responded to Eliphaz's words. Bildad does not speak about Eliphaz's words. He goes straight to Job's words. How long will you say such things? Your words are blistering wind. Then he asks in verse 3, does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what he is right? Pervert. To pervert something is to distort what should be normal. Pervert leads to what? Perversion. He says, does God Almighty, El Shaddai, does he pervert justice? Does he distort justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? So in other words, Bildad, not knowing what Job has gone through, and most importantly, not knowing why, Job is going through, he thinks that Job, he must have done something because God is not a God that he would distort justice. Then he says in verse 4, when your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. Sin, according to the Bible, what the wages of sin is what, y'all? It's death. And so in other words, Bildad is telling Job the reason your children are dead because they have sinned. Now that could all be well and true, but is that the appropriate uh, words when Job is grieving? Sometimes you can say some stuff that is true, but why are you saying it at this moment? Timing matters, amen? Timing and situations matter, and you're saying this on a day that Job has practically lost everything. Amen? Amen. And let's go back. You're saying it as if you didn't see it. And, and I want to say that because some of us will be quick to say, yes, pastor, the wages of sin is death. And you want to hang on and hold on to that Bible verse. Amen? Well, I'm going to take you to the other Bible verse that said all have fallen Amen, somebody. Come on, talk back to me tonight. All have fallen short of the glory of God. 
And so if it is the fact that his children have sinned and they have met the wages of sin, which is death, then you who have sinned, you should be in a moment of grace right now, giving God the glory that God has spared in your life. And if God has been so merciful to you, you ought to be throwing that mercy out to everybody else instead of having judgment. Amen? But he says in verse 5, But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore to you your pro prosperous state. If you are pure and upright. Well, we learned in verse 1, right? Job 1 and 1, what did it say? It said Job was upright. He was blameless. And he feared and shunned evil. And he feared the Lord. When you say if, that means you don't even believe what others are saying about me. That's some hate, y'all. Now, I'm here to tell somebody, righteousness can come in two ways. Righteousness can come. When others declare you are righteous, amen, somebody. Righteousness, I'm going to say that again. Righteousness can come when others declare that you are righteous. But real righteousness can only come from your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Real, I'm going to say that again. Real righteousness can only come from your faith in Jesus Christ. If you don't believe me, you need to find your way to uh, find your way to the verse. Uh, I'll give it to you in a minute. But it declares that our righteousness, it comes from our faith in God. Amen. So others can declare you righteous and you holy. Does not mean a hill of beans. Amen. Because others don't know what God knows. And others have not seen you outside of the state of human limitations. Meaning you can tell me a whole lot and then go behind my back and do a whole little. Amen? But righteousness comes through faith. You can't work for righteousness. It must come through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? But he says if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty. Now as foolish as Bildad was in his rebuke of Job. He's hitting a strong point right there in verse 5 if you seek God earnestly. And I want to pause right there for a little bit to tell somebody that's going through something. It's when you're going through, you got to be able to understand you need to seek God. Talking to some real people tonight. It's when you are going through. People may not be answering your calls, responding to your emails or your text messages, but you got to remember to seek God in those moments. You got to remember to seek God in those moments because if you seek God in those moments, you will see that you have become the manifestation of Scripture. Come on, talk back to me, Bible readers. Am I talking to anybody who has read Hebrews 11 and 6? Am I talking to anybody tonight that has read Hebrews 11 and 6? If you turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews 11 and 6, I'm trying to encourage somebody that when you're going through and when life seems like it's up to your neck in a storm, you got to find your way to Hebrews 11 and 6. Because in Hebrews 11 and 6, the first call says that without faith, what? It's impossible to please God. But the last cause is what I want to stick on, and that is he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek after him. And so Bill Dad has something right in that message right there, and that is when you are going through something, you got to be diligently in seeking after God. Diligently means persistently. That means you didn't pray once and then just throw in the towel. Amen. You didn't ask for, for, from God one time and say, it must not be my, my blessing. It must not be my situation. Diligent means I'm just going to keep knocking to the door open. I'm just going to keep blowing to the door push open. I'm just going to keep pushing to the door. 
Am I talking to somebody tonight who knows that you've been in a situation before and you didn't have nobody but God, but you kept seeking after God? You didn't have help from your friend. You didn't have help from nobody in the church house. You kept seeking after God. And now it's your testimony that God showed up in the midst of the situation. God showed up in the midst of the struggle. I'm talking to somebody tonight that's going through something. You got to seek God and believe that he rewards. He rewards. He rewards those who diligently seek after him. And so I'm talking to somebody tonight that's seeking after peace. Seek God. I'm talking to somebody tonight that's seeking after their dream in this season. Seek God. I'm talking to somebody that's, that's trying to get your family together and on one accord. Seek God. I'm talking to somebody that need a new friend circle. Your friend circle is a little stagnant. Seek God. In your marriage, seek God. In your relationships, seek God. And watch God diligently reward you. Now, the reward may not come when you want it to come. Amen? It may not. You may have to let us, how they say, let some stuff tear. You may have to let some stuff marinate. It may not come. But if you trust in God, and you know without faith it's impossible to please God, you don't get dismayed. Because you know that God will what? He'll take care of you. So he says in verse 6, if you are pure and upright, that's, that's hate, y'all. If you are pure and upright, we know he's pure and upright. We know it. Job 1 and 1, it says that he was pure and upright. We know in Genesis 7, it says Noah was pure and upright. But was those pure and upright according to man's standard? Or was those pure and upright according to God's standard? See, men can say you are pure and upright, but men may be telling a falsehood. I want to be upright based off of what God says. Amen? I want to be upright based off of what God says. Amen? Now, the text says, watch this. Verse 7. That's my shout verse. That's my shout verse. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I want to talk to somebody. I want to talk to some real people tonight. I want to talk to somebody that's either start something and are, are you getting ready to start something and it don't seem like you have everything you need? I'm talking to somebody tonight that it does not seem like you have everything you need. You're trying to start something and your resources look a little low. The, the support of your family and friends are a little low. The support in your bank account is a little low. Amen? Your encouragement and your faith inside is a little low. I want you to write down verse 7 because verse 7 is the real. Verse 7 says, your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. No, let me, I don't want that version. I want King James Version. I want King. King James Version says, though thy beginnings be small, the latter end shall greatly increase. Though thy beginnings be small, I'm speaking that over somebody's life, the latter end shall greatly increase. I'm talking to somebody right now, you started something and you know that God has told you to start it, but it does not seem like it's popping. It does not seem like it's going to the next level. I want you to trust God tonight and have an end time praise. I want somebody to have a latter end praise tonight. What did we say? We said loose ends, latter ends. I know the ends may seem loose. I know it may seem shallow. I know it may seem small. I know it may seem mundane. But I'm not talking to anybody tonight that believes that when God has said it's time, it's going to pop. Am I talking to anybody? I'm talking to the city of David tonight. Though thy beginnings be small, the latter end shall greatly increase. And while you're waiting on the end to increase, you can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. You can't. Somebody should have been telling Job, Job, this is not the time to give up. 
This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time to quit. Hang in there. Trust God. Hold on to God's unchanging hand and watch God bring you out. Talk to somebody tonight. Watch God bring you out. Write down what you have started or write down what you want to start and it's not big enough right now. I'm talking to somebody now. I want to, I want to test somebody's faith. Write it down. Don't look at me. Write down what you want in this life and what, where you see it at tonight on this Wednesday night, February 2nd. It seems small. Amen. Our ministry right now, it, seem, it may seem to some smaller. I'll never use the word small. I want you to see the latter end greatly increase. It does not say it increases a little bit. It says greatly increase. Y'all told me when I came to church that God can do what? Exceedingly above what I ever thought, dreamed, or imagined. And so it does not matter what it looks like today. My God still has power because he's El Shaddai to breathe on it and make it grow large. Breathe on it and make it pop. Breathe on it and do what nobody else can do. Would you open up your mouth tonight? Give God the glory. So write down Job 8 and 7. Though thy beginnings be small, the latter end shall greatly increase. And they may be laughing at you because the beginnings are small. Just say, keep on laughing. I'm going to get the last laugh. I'm going to get, just keep on laughing. I'm going to get the last laugh. Just leave if you want to leave. Walk out if you want to let walk out. I'm going to get the last laugh because God will greatly increase. Our text says in verse 8. Now, Bill Dad is saying, well, ask the former generation and find out why their ancestors learned. What their ancestors learned. Keep going. Find out what their ancestors learned. For we were born on yesterday and know nothing. And our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not instruct you and tell you? Will they not bring forth words from their understanding? Now, he begins to make an analogy. Uh, can papyrus grow tall while there is no marsh? Marsh is needed for papyrus to grow tall. He's trying to make an analogy. Can reeds thrive without war? Well, while still growing and uncut, they wither more quickly than grass. He's trying to say, Job, your righteousness did not hang in there when you were going through hard times or being tempted, and that's why your situation has withered. Now, if you're my friend, you're going to speak to me in a different manner. If you're my friend, you ought to speak life. Whether it's Pastor Coleman Knight say it's a loaded gun, you ought to be shooting bullets of encouragement and not bullets of destruction. Amen? Amen. And the reason we got to be careful how we talk to other individuals, because you don't know why God is taking me through what he's taking me through. Amen? Don't get on your high horse and see me going through a struggle and say, I must have seen it. God could be trying to get the glory out of this. And he knows, watch this, he knows my faith or surpass yours. See, God can give you a test and you'll crumble like a cheap suit. But he knows if he give me a test, I'll stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And he wants others' faith to grow, but he can't use you because you don't have that kind of faith muscle. But he knows he can use me because he knows through it all, I'm going to seek after him and give him the glory. He knows through it all. I'm going to praise him no matter what. I, I want somebody to know that every now and then you got to praise God even when your situation don't make sense. You got to give, y'all playing with me tonight. You got to give God the glory even when the enemy is on your tracks, on your trail. Even, what did the text say? The text says, even when I would be doing good, enemy is always lurking. Hate is always lurking. Bad time is always. That's when you got to show who it is and what you believe in. 
It's easy to say, I will bless the Lord all times when everything is good. But can you say it when mama is laying before you? Can you say it when your job is lost and you don't have two nickels to rub together? Can you say it when your car is broke down and you don't have money to even get the coffee? Can you say it when the marriage or the relationship crumbles and go to hell in the handbasket that I will bless the Lord at all times? text says in verse 12 while still growing and uncut they wither more quickly than grass such is the destiny of all who forget God so perish the hope of the godless what Bill died is saying is that you are going to be like that paperless tree you are going to wither and you are going to fall down if you stray away from God now that's a good that's a that's a good message. Every now and then a fool can say something smart. That's a good message. Amen. Amen. That's a good message. And it's a good message that we can learn from. Because it's true. You can't stray away from God and think God's gonna bless you. Amen. You can't stray away from God and expect God to bless you. Let me say it like that. But some of us have strayed away from God. And while we were on the other side of the tracks, we've come to learn that God will bless you even when you're outside of his will. Amen? Bill Dyer was saying, can you expect to be blessed? Amen. But here's what I don't like about Bill Dyer. Bill Dyer, you said something would wither and almost die. Amen. Why? And in your other tongue, you're saying, Job, you must have seen but the mere fact that Job, even with worms, even with skin blistering, even though Job is standing there, ought to be evidence to you that Job didn't sin like you thought he sinned. And instead of talking to him sideways, you ought to be trying to encourage him that God's grace is still being prevalent in his life. See, some of us don't look like what we've been through. Amen? Some of us don't look like what we've been through, right? If the wages of sin is death, amen, and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God, I may come in here with a limp, I may come in here slow walking, I may come in here with my head tilted, but I'm still walking. I'm still, and I'm still strutting. I, I, I still got light, and as long as you got light in you, God can turn it around. As long as you got life in, that's why I tell people all the time, don't you let these hypocrites in the church that barely read their Bible, don't you let them make you die before you dead. You may be with a limp, you may be barely hang on, but you better hang on with that limp and give God the glory. You may be teetering, you may be wobbling. But while you're teetering and while you're wobbling, you better learn how to give God the glory. Because if, if, if you're still teetering and wobbling, watch this, you still got some life in you, right? You still got some life in you. Well, can I stop by to, I feel like preaching right now. Can I stop by to encourage somebody why you can't give up when all hell is breaking loose in your life and you still got life I read my Bible. Come here, talk to me, Bible. I read my Bible in Matthew nine. There was a there was a little girl. She was dead. She was dead, and Jesus came by and took her by the hand, and she got up. There was a little boy in in, in Luke seven. He was dead. He was sitting in a casket. Jesus came by and touched the casket. He got up. You recall in John eleven, Lazarus was dead. And the Bible says he was in the ground and Jesus says, get up. If they were dead and God got them up, what makes you think you teetering and you wobbling that God can't bring you up? What makes you think that even though you're falling down, that's why in the midst of you falling down, you still got to trust that he is El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so the text says, watch this. Such verse 14. So what they trust in is fragile. What they rely on is a spider's web. What they trust on is fragile. What they uh, rely on is a spider's web. Bill that he's a fool, but he's talking good, y'all. 
he's talking good because, I mean, have you ever seen a picture of a spider's web? I mean, isn't it beautiful? It's nice how that little creature has spun the web. It's so nice and it's all neat, right? The circles all match, the lines all match. And what Bildad is saying, some of y'all have strayed away from God for stuff that looks cute, but it can't really hold you up. Some of y'all, let's go back. Some of y'all got some spider web type of associations in your circle. The circle looks cute. The friend looks cute, right? The lines are all nicely, neatly matched. But if you ever, if you ever just lean on a spider web, it'll just tumble down. If you even, if you even blow on a spider web and you got that kind of wind in you, it'll fall apart. And that's like some of your associations. It may look, oh my God, it may look cute. <laughs> it may look pretty, but let some wind hit that thing. That thing will fall down and crumble. That's why you ought to give God the glory because God's, his grace and his providence is not like on spider web. You can lean on the grace of God. You can fall down on the grace of God. You can blow as much as you want on the grace of God. You can shoot fire out of, you can shoot water out of a fire hose at the, at the grace of God. And it will stand the test of, the test of time. He says, they lean on the web in verse 15, but it gives way. They cling to it. But it does not hold. A whole lot of folks have lost their way leaning on spider webs. You was doing good as long as you was with God. But watch this. But because he didn't reward you quick enough, some other stuff looked better to you. You got some good stuff in your life. God has blessed you. But because it didn't blow up like you thought it should have blown up, you strayed away from it. You got some good people in your life. Amen. But because it didn't grow or blow up to the degree or at the time you wanted it to blow and grow up, you strayed away from God. Now you're leaning on spider webs, not knowing that soon those spider webs going to fall down. Talk to me. Somebody needs to say, I'm going to stay with God. Come on, I'm going to stay with God. Come on, I'm going I'm to stay with God. No matter what, I'm going to stay with God. The text says, watch this. Verse 16, chapter 8. They are like a well-watered plant in the sunshine, spreading its shoots over the garden. It intertwines, it intertwines its roots around a pile of rocks and looks for a place amongst the stones. But when it is torn from its spot, the place disowns it and says, I never saw you. Oh my God. Ain't that like some of y'all friends? You, 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 your roots. <laughs> I know y'all don't want to say amen tonight. Your roots. Because you thought it looked good. You thought it looked good. Your roots are intertwined amongst a pile of stones. And pretty soon them stones, when they have used you up, you're not going to have no place. You got to understand this. If some people think they clean you, let them go. I'm going to say that again if somebody can hear me. If some people think they clean you, let them go. Because what they're going to discover, especially when you was good to them, what they, what they will discover is the people they leave you for are going to play them. I'm going to talk to some real people tonight, right? I feel like talking to some real. If, if, if you think you playing me and I've been good to you, go ahead. That's what this text is saying. Go ahead and watch the people that you run into, they're going to play you. And then you're not going to have no place to go. That's why some people keep call, keep coming back to you. That's why some people keep calling you, keep texting you. Amen? Because they know that they have left you and they have their roots in the midst of some stones. And when those stones have uprooted the spot, they had nowhere to go. Texas. 
Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk to me tonight. Y'all gonna get in trouble. It says, surely, verse 19, surely its life weathers away. And from the soil, other plants grow. Surely, God does not reject one who is blameless or strengthen the hands of the evildoers. What he's saying is that surely God, this is Bildad once again. See, he started sleep, then he got you know, some good sense. Now he got to go back to sleep. Right? Because he's saying, watch this, let's break it down. Surely God doesn't reject one who's blameless. What did it say in Job 1 and 1? He was what? He was, thank you. He was blameless. So he's saying, if you blameless, you wouldn't be going through all this hell, Job. If you blame, if you really blameless, you wouldn't be going through all this hell. You mean to tell me y'all had a meeting? Y'all heard about the struggles I was going through. Y'all had a meeting and said that we gotta go see about my brother. And when y'all come to me, this is the kind of energy y'all bring to me. When y'all come, y'all not even being spontaneous. This is premeditated. And when he says, or strengthen the hands of evildoers, it means encouragement. When you see that in scripture, we talked about that a few weeks ago, it means encouragement. So what he's basically saying, it would God reject someone who is without blame and would God not encourage someone who is without blame? So Job, even if you were going through a hard time, you would already have encouragement from God that everything's going to be all right. But the fact you blistering and crying out and got all these sores, it must mean you're not blameless. He says in verse 21, he will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. You just said does he reject the blameless and now you want to try to encourage them. That's how some people they see they play. They try to play you. They wishy washy. And what does the Bible says about double minded people? They unstable in all their ways. You can't expect loyalty out of somebody that's double minded. You can't expect somebody that's you can't expect fidelity with somebody that's double minded. If if you know people Watch this. That's double-minded. I'm giving. I'm gonna give a real example. If you know some people that are double-minded, amen. And they come to you and ask, "Can they borrow money?" And you allow them to borrow money. Why would you expect them to pay you back? It's crazy for you to expect for them to pay you back. If they double-minded. That means anything can come and what? Change their mind. There's some people you roll with, their mind change like the wind. If it blow to the east, they go to the east. If it blow to the west, they go to the west. If they hang with the people on the east side, they'll talk about you. But if they go to the west side, they'll talk about the people on the east side. He says, yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy, your enemies will be clothed in shame and the tents of the wicked will be no more. Your enemies. Well, when I read all of this, I'm not sure I should not be considered Elephies and Bildad one of my enemies. Amen? If my friend's talking to me like this, I don't need no enemies. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Then, then chapter 9, Job replies. So let's see how Job replied. We saw how he, he replied in chapter 6 and 7 to what Eliphaz had to say. Let's see what Job, how Job replies in chapter 9. Amen? Amen. Praise God. The text says, indeed, indeed, I know this is true, but how can mere mortals prove their innocence before God? Though they wished to dispute with him, they could not answer him one time out of a thousand. His wisdom is profound and his power is vast. Who has resisted him and come out unscathed? He moves mountains without 
their knowing it and overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth from its place and makes its pillars tremble. He speaks to the sun and it does not shine. He seals off the light of the stars. Job is speaking truth to power about the power of God. He declares, he alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He is the maker of the bear and the Orion, the Pleiades, and the constellation of the south. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. When he passes me, I cannot see him. When he goes by, I cannot perceive him. If he snatches away, who can stop him? If he snatches away, who? if God takes away, who can stop him? Now notice Job said he passes uh, by me and I cannot see him. When he goes by, I cannot perceive him. Perceive him means I can't see him. Because the Bible teaches us in the Pentateuch, the first five books, that no man can see the face of God. But even though we can't see the face of God, we have seen God. I'm going to say it again. Even though we can't see the face of God, we have seen God. Preacher, what you talking about? I've never seen the face of God, but I've seen God bring me out. I've seen God bring me over I've seen God heal family members like my mama and my daddy and my brothers. I've seen God bless what I've set my hands to. I've seen God make a way out of no way. I've seen God wake me up day after day after day after day. I've seen God answer my prayers. I've seen God bless me with things I never thought I would have. I've seen God take me from one ministry to another ministry. I've seen God elevate me in ministry. I've seen God work it out in the life of other people. I've seen God move in the life of someone who went in the hospital one day and they got discharged on another day. I've seen God work in the life of somebody that got a bad report from a doctor, but yet the report of the Lord was greater. I've seen God pay a bill. I've seen God shut a door. I've seen God open a door. Am I talking to anybody who knows that you have seen God for yourself? Make a way out of no way. Job is saying that I've seen God do it all. I've seen God, let's go there. I've seen God bless us in the midst of a pandemic. I've seen God take us from worrying about whether or not we would have toilet paper in the water to now being on the other side of that to give him the glory and the honor. And I've seen God take us through the first variant. I've seen him take us through Delta. I've seen us take through Omicron. I want somebody to give God the glory and the honor and the praise realizing that God is almighty. He says, he says in the text, he says, and God does not restrain his anger. Even the cohorts of Rahab cower at his feet. His, his anger, he says, he does not restrain. That means he doesn't shackle his anger. When God is angered, he is angered. Amen? When God, I'm going to say that again so somebody can hear that. When God is angered, he is angered. But you gotta find a way to you gotta find your way to Psalm 35, somebody. Somebody gotta find somebody gotta find your way to Psalms 30 and 5. It's a verse that many of you all have heard before. You just wait on me to recite it. His anger lasts for a moment. That ought to be somebody shout right there. I, I don't even go no further. His anger, it lasts for a moment. But, that's a conjunction word, y'all. That means delete everything I just said. But, his favor, a lifetime. Weeping may endure. Oh, my God. Weeping may endure for a night. But, that's a conjunction. Joy shall come 
in the morning. So he says, it's not the fact that God restrains his anger. Amen. Somebody needs to understand that. Right? But it only lasts for a moment. Favor, a lifetime. Text says, watch this. How then can I dispute with him? How can I find way, words to argue with him? Though I were innocent, I could not answer him. Though I were innocent, I could not answer him. Though I did not know why I was going through this, I couldn't answer him. You're not going to always have the answers. Amen. You're not going to always have the answers. I'm talking to some real people tonight. You're not going to always have the answers. And the moment you find yourself lacking answers ought to be a sure enough time for you to seek after God. Amen? What is the proverb we shared the other day? Right? The one who asks questions, you may look dumb for five minutes. The one who never asks questions, you may look dumb forever. Amen? God is big enough to answer your questions. Amen? He says, I could only plead with my judge for mercy. And even if I summoned him and he responded, I do not believe he would give me a hearing. Everything Job knows about God, he's losing in this moment. Everything Job knows about God, he's forgetting in this moment. I know some of y'all are super holy, and life has been real good for you. You, you never had no struggles. You never had no mental episode. You never had no bout with depression. And we praise God for you. But I challenge you, keep on living. Keep on living. Keep on, keep on waking up. That amazing grace is going to hit differently. Keep on, it, 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 like the ghetto boys, your mind will play tricks on you. It'll make you sicker. It'll make you think you sicker than you really are. It'll make you think you so low down that the grace of God can't reach you. Job knows the power of God, but his life is in such turmoil that he can't. But I'm talking to somebody tonight. That even when it seems like God, even when it seems like you can't get to God, you got to understand that God can't get to you. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Even when it seems like God is so distant and it seems like you can't get to God, your prayers can't get to God, your shout can't get to God, your worship can't get to God. I'm here to knock on your door and whisper in your ear, God can get to you. Pastor, can you prove it? Yes, I can. Well, if God is omnipresent, then God is already right where you are. If God is omnipresent, God is already standing. He don't have to get nowhere because wherever you are, he's already there. If God is omnipresent, he's right where you are. See, you got to call on the name of God knowing that he is Jehovah Roe. He's the one that sees. And the same God that sees you in that moment is the same God that will reveal himself. See, God deals in manifestation and revelation. God deals in manifestation and revelation. He creates situations for him to reveal himself as God. He'll, he will allow for you to get sick for him to reveal himself as a healer. He will allow for you to catch a case for he to reveal himself as a judge. He will allow for you to lose your job for him to reveal himself as a boss. He will allow for you to get hooked on a drug for him to reveal himself as a deliverer. You got to understand right where you are that God can reveal and manifest a new destiny. He creates situations. He creates situations. And so when you are, here it is, when you are going through a situation, I need you 
I need right there in the midst of the situation for you to just give God the glory and say, God, this ain't nothing but another opportunity for you to reveal yourself. <laughs> I need somebody tonight. So tonight, if you're watching online and you're going through something, just to begin to speak over your own life. God, this ain't nothing but another situation, another opportunity for you to reveal yourself of who you are. This ain't nothing. I don't care what goes on in your mind. This ain't nothing. People getting on your last nerve. People trying to comfort all of your peace. Just stand still and say, God, this ain't nothing but another opportunity for you to reveal yourself. Somebody need deliverance on tonight. Not just from people, but from stuff, from thoughts, from habits, from mindsets. God, this ain't nothing but another opportunity for you to reveal yourself. And he says, watch this, we got your way. He said, even if I were innocent, my mouth would condemn me. Even if I were blameless, it would pronounce me guilty. That means every now and then you talk too much. Some of y'all so smart that you're dumb. You talk too much. Amen? You would talk your way into a case. Amen? He says, although I am blameless, I have no concern for myself. I despise my own life. It is all the same. That is why I say he destroys both the what? The blameless and the wicked. When a scrounge brings sudden death, he mocks the despair of the innocent. When a land falls into the hands of the wicked, he blindfolds its judges. If it is not he, then who is it? My days are swifter than a runner. They fly away without a glimpse of joy. Joel said he go through days he can't even remember. He chased after days all day long. They skim past like boats of papyrus, like eagles swooping down on their prey. And if I say I will forget my complaint, I will change my expression and smile. If I say I will forget my complaint, I will change my expression and smile. So why don't you forget your complaint? Why don't you tonight forget your complaint and smile? Even though it hurts, like Kurt Franklin said, why don't you smile? Every now and then, even when you're going through, it's about what you're going to speak to your situation. Are you going to wallow in despair? Or are you going to speak that this ain't nothing but another opportunity for God to reveal himself? I still dread all my sufferings for I know you will not hold me innocent. Since I am already found guilty, why should I struggle in vain? Even if I wash myself with soap and my hands with cleansing powder, you would plunge me into a slime pit so that even my clothes would detest me. He is not a mere mortal like me that I might answer him that we might confront each other in court. If only there was someone to mediate between us, someone to bring us together. Some of y'all may be saying the same thing, and that someone is Jesus. Jesus is your mediator. The Bible says what? No man can get to God but through who? Jesus. That's your mediator, Joe. He says, Someone to remove God's wrath from me so that his terror would frighten me no more. That I will speak up without fear of him, but as it now stands with me, I cannot. Let me say this and I'm going to get off of it. I'm going to be done. When Job says in verse 34, someone to remove God's wrath from me, that's how you know Job was in a crazy state. Because a shepherd's rod is meant for your good. A shepherd is an animal that will blindly go anywhere. 
Amen? And so the rod of the shepherd is the hook. And the hook will bring you back into safety arm. It's the other part that will push or pride or hit. But the hook, you want the rod of the shepherd. Because every now and then you may stray away and it's that hook. That's why, it's so, that's why the son says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Because he know his Lord and shepherd has a rod that has a Somebody ought to have a hook praise tonight. I don't know about y'all, but I got a hook praise tonight. And even when I fall astray, help me, Lord. He'll hook me back in and bless me evermore. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen, amen. Praise God, praise God on tonight. And so on tonight, we just want to give God the glory and the honor and the praise and thank God. So Job 8 and 7, somebody ought to have a ladder in praise. And somebody ought to have a hook praise that the hook of God can bring you back. Amen? Though thy beginnings be small, I don't care what you're looking at right now in the natural eye, you ought to give God the glory and the honor and the praise that the latter end, it shall greatly increase. I speak that over your life. I speak that over your dreams. I speak that over your families. I speak that over the city of David. I speak that over my own family, my own dreams, my own relationships. At the latter end, they shall greatly increase. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God on tonight. Tonight, we are lifting up all the names on our prayer list. And I just want to continue to call out these names. Let me call them out. We are still lifting up Sister Erica Hall and her family. As they prepare to celebrate the life of her nephew, the Johnson family, uh, Sister Crystal Davis, the Dixon family, Ronnie McClendon McClend family, the Moore family, the Martin family, the Benefield family, the Rogers family, the Gaines family, the Benefield family, the Wells family, the Roseboro family, Sister Shante Ellis, Sister Eureka Young, Pops Ross Johnson, Sister Wendy Strong and family, Brother Marcelo Taylor, Bishop Young, Bishop Kirkland, Mother Jackie Martin, Deborah Hall and the Hall family, Pastor Haynes, Victoria Green, Arlene Scott, Keith Wilson, we're lifting you up, my brother, James Reed, Paul Scott, we're lifting up Eugene McAdoo, we're lifting up Cynthia Maxwell, we're lifting up Sister Sabrina and family, David Fistro Sr., Uncle Nate Robinson, Emmanuel Coley, Paulina Brooks, Daryl Main, Reginald Alexander, Mama Vera Harper, Pamela Sims, uh, Miss Betty Sims, Lola, Taisha Harvey and family, Kiasha Macklin, Shalane Johnson, Carolyn Johnson, Willis Al Johnson, Ken Stanberry, Ray May, Marcel May, Mother Esther Daniels, Mother Holly Frazier, Sister Barbara Loren, Sister Willa Dasher, Brother Tylen Dasher, Brother Andrew Ireland, Dr. Karen Ireland, Dr. Tamai Johnson, Sister Kanita Lewis, Melvin Lewis, Mother Alma Thomas, Fred Cheek, Barbara Sparrell, Trace Berry, John Downey, Walker Posey Jr., Don Posey, the McCray family, the Wyndham family, Brother Richard Griffin, Brother Sammy Davis, Sister Wanda, Sister Kia Anderson, Baby Jason, Uncle Gus Briscoe, Imani Hayes, Bootsy Briscoe, Booker T. Stanley, and Eloise Tenner, and all those who have received a positive test. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Merciful God, we come before you on tonight, God, to lift you up and to thank you for this word that you have given us on tonight. We praise you, God, and give you all the glory and the honor and the praise, God. Thanking you, God, for being our shepherd with their rod. We have a rod, a hook praise on tonight, God. And I pray right now, encouragement over the body, God. Every believer under the sound of my voice, God, that Job 8 and 7 might be their shout. Though what they see might be small right now, that in due season, God, you will greatly increase. For every name that we've called out, even the silent petitions, we lift up and place in your hands on tonight, God. We believe by faith that nothing shall separate us, God, from your love. 
And so, God, through it all, we will praise you, God. Through it all, we will trust in you. Through it all, we will hang in there and see the salvation of you and you alone. Move right now, God, over our family. Move right now over our church family, God. Move right now, God, over our friend circles. And God, we will tell this world, when you bless us, it was nobody but you. We won't give man the credit. God will give you the credit and declare you are the maker of heaven and earth, God. All blessings come from you. Bless us abundantly, God, until we meet again. And we will forevermore praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you want to join our church tonight, just type hashtag all in and you can join our church. Have a wonderful night. See you on Sunday.